Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm loud. Officially my favorite quote. Of, yes. Uh, well, there's one other one that we're going to hit in a minute that, 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 that is probably pretty close to my favorite quote, but uh, that's, 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 that's definitely one of them. Go sports. You know why I like that one? Why? Because it reminds me of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a smashing start here. All right, hold on. It reminds me of this. I love my dead gay son. <gasps> oh, whoa. <laughs> nice. I thought you might like a little uh, Heather's pull into this Thank one. Thank you. Yeah, so. That one's going to uh, get used a lot. Yeah, like the whole, like, you know, end of the speech, and you don't really know what to say, and so you just blurt. <laughs> like, they, they both kind of have the little, uh, you know, blurt vibe to them. San Diego's high school football rule. That's a, that's a I love of, my dead gay son. They kind of roll, right? I totally forgot how it sounded in the movie. Yeah, that's that's the movie version. Yeah, because yeah. in the musical, it's like I I love my dead gay son. <laughs> no, no, no. It's kind of like the blurt at the end of the speech. Yes. All right, so that's our Heather's reference for the podcast. We right. got that out of the way. Obligatory, we're, we're, Heather's, we're, we're, reference. obligatory Heather's reference. I've actually got uh, many other references that we usually have in the podcast <gasps> to come. So Ooh. yeah, yeah. Why don't you uh, go ahead and tell the people what they're listening to there, oh. uh, Presley? Uh, hi, welcome to Validate Me. This is a podcast where I show my dad things and my dad shows me things in hopes that the other will like. It and validate them. Yeah, so I we, think I did that wrong, but oh no, well. that's close enough. We try and uh, you know uh, steal like about four hours of each other's time. Yes. Uh, before we do the steal. podcast every two weeks, and so or control <gasps> <laughs> even better. So we get to control about four hours of the other person's time. We watch a movie. We listen to an album. We've done musicals. We've read books. We've done all kinds of stuff. So um, Video game. whatever, we'll find out whatever my assignment is at the end of this podcast. Presley's assignment for this podcast was to watch Bill and Ted's. Excellent editor? Yeah. Yes, so that's right. that's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I just um, call it Bill and Ted. So. Bill and Ted. So Presley had to watch the first Bill and Ted movie. Is, and uh, I forgot well, there's a second one. There's a second one, and there's a third one coming, apparently. Yes, yes. It I, would appear I saw that, that. There's a, they're, they're actually working on a third one with the original cast, which is kind of interesting. Is the second one... Ha- like very very bad because that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, come on, come on. And like this is re- it, it's got like cult status at this point. I think right. Yeah. It uh it kind of it blew up and it did pretty well actually. I think it oh, was a, it was a relatively well performing movie. It was definitely period accurate. Like you know when I I saw this when it was in the theaters and. It felt like a thing that you would like, and mm-hmm. it had the uh, you know the Tangerine Dream sounding mm-hmm. soundtrack in parts of it, like Three O'clock High, which was kind of cool. Ooh, how I actually thought. Uh, three let, me high move, let me move my notes so I can see them without getting too far away from the mic. Um, it made me think. Uh, the opening song made me think. I sent you a link uh, this week about Joe Iconis, yeah. like going through and uh, detailing the process of writing the music for Be More Chill. Way, but it's real good. Which we get to see him with Be More Chill in a couple right? of months, we right? Do. Live with the we original didn't say cast. That yet. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go. Oh, we're gonna go to New York and see mind. Be More Chill. Anyway, there's this there's this thing with Joe Iconis and he like talks about the entire process. And so when the beginning this movie was starting with its awesome special effects that look like an <laughs> 80s screensaver um, <laughs> so kicking in, uh, I thought Joe Iconis had a line in that, that article that said, Hello synth Nice to meet you. Won't you please overstay your welcome for the next two and a half hours? <laughs> like, I thought that was a that was a great intro to what was going to happen. But then it turned a little more like uh, hair bandy, and we'll talk more about Ooh, the hair, hair bandy stuff yeah, as we get into it. We've already talked about hair bands on this podcast. We, Save yeah, it for your hair band what? podcast, Dad. <laughs> I made you listen to Appetite for Destruction as yes. one of your assignments. That's clearly the hair band territory. Yes, that's why I said we already talked about it. Yeah. So first thing I want to uh, I want to address like you know the uh, the elephant in the room, um, which is which is that this is. Is uh, basically the American Doctor Who. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. They're in a phone box traveling through time, going to different historical <laughs> Doctor events Who, in, Doctor in the Who, past. Uh, in Doctor Who, the Doctor doesn't just give his phone booth to two random teenagers and it's like, go do your history. Well, no, they're assignment. the Doctor. They are the doctor. They're the doctor and the companion. Just like at the same time, Dan and Phil are both <laughs> simultaneously Dan and or Phil. For, to him, Bill and Ted are like Scott and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lost reference. Uh, dropping lost references already. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bill and Ted are the Scott and Steve and Dan and Phil Do you and know which Rhett and Link. And uh, uh, who else was I going to say? The Doctor and the Companion. Although you kind of know who those are. When you, <laughs> they do fall, it starts to fall apart when you get to the Doctor and the Companion. But yeah, they're like, you know, interchangeably. Wait, do you not know the difference between them? No, I, okay, I, mean, I kind of know who they are. But there was like an ongoing <laughs> gag that like even they didn't, weren't sure. Like early in the production, <laughs> right. who was who. It was a very Scott and 
Steve kind of thing going. It's Scott and Steve. Yeah, and it's Keanu Reeves, so, you know. Right, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> my first, well, I, well, not my technically my first note, but the most important note is that my brain cannot fathom that that's Keanu Reeves. Really? Like, it's just my brain is like, no. Because he's not stabbing people with pencils? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's yeah. not. He's not John Wick? Yeah, he's not John Wick. So, is, is so John Wick your Keanu Reeves? Yes. Uh, see, this is more my Keanu Reeves. Like this and Point Break, which again has the absolute worst delivery of a line I'm of dialogue. So thrilled of any movie this. ever and so i have to have presley watch that maybe next but uh yeah this this and the point break and maybe into matrix maybe yeah. kind of segueing okay, well, into that is my keanu, keanu. Reeves. well keanu reeves is a the real keanu reeves because i've seen so many stories about the real actual keanu reeves mm-hmm. and john wick and so seeing him as the squib in this movie <laughs> the squib <laughs> squid <laughs> squonk um yeah yeah, so a little bit the squip, too. This is how we all came to know and love Keanu Reeves. Oh, that's so wild. This, was, this is Keanu that's, Reeves' origin story. And now so he's weird. John Wick. Like, this right? guy is John Wick now. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's so weird. And he still says, whoa, like in every movie he's ever <laughs> been in. I think um, I read in one of the things that there are like 77 dudes in this movie. And like 77? 35 boguses or something. There's I don't know, I don't know what the other thing was. Movie. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember what the other thing was. But yeah. Um... So, yeah, that's Keanu Reeves to me. And Keanu Reeves, I'm convinced, is an immortal and probably a vampire Mm -hmm. and maybe a fae. Yeah. It's just, Keanu Reeves is just not a person. (laughs) Fae. Yes. Keanu Um, Reeves is not real. Yeah, right. So, uh, I did also, on the Doctor Who thing, I also had that the phone booth clearly has more room on the inside because they put like 15 people in it. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, that's still Doctor Who. They hung out in one shot. And then even like Capaldi... Is like guitar playing, like in the thing. Whoa. So they're always like, it all like comes back with their whole. Maybe he's from that future where they're all playing guitars, is where, yeah. like, that's, that's, uh, yeah. Oh, this is our connectedness of everything ever. Everything, is, that, is, everything is connected. Everything is connected somehow. Everything is connected. Yes. And of course, I said it's, it's the American Doctor Who because they're both dumb. <laughs> 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 more American. Um, I know. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, so they're they're both more or less idiots, and uh, yeah. so that makes well, it that makes it the American Doctor Who instead of like okay. solving problems. That, right. Actually, but, I read too that one of the early sc- versions of the script was them like Rosencrantz and Guildensterning their way through history and causing all the great disasters, <gasps> like they caused the Titanic to beautiful. sink and the Hindenburg to explode, and like all of. The, I don't know if that's true. Or I'm not, so proud of them. That would be. Uh, that actually might have been a better movie. That would have been um, a good movie. I would have really it enjoyed been a, that. It, it would have been a good. That movie. should have been the sequel to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. all right. Uh, yeah. So, oh, huh. So yeah, about the dumb thing is it's the uh, dumb gay representation that we truly deserve. Is like, mm, yeah, that's <laughs> we're right. all dumb. Yes, yes, yes. It's pointing the camera back at us. <laughs> yeah. in some weird way. No, we all dumb. I, uh, I, I did think at the beginning when they're shooting like whatever their music video oh, kind yeah. of thing with a camera, like it was very YouTubey. Like this the is camera so big, pre YouTube, but it is them kind of shooting each other and like, oh hey, I can't talk while I'm holding the camera. I, you, you need to hold the camera while I do my part. And so it was like a very yeah, it's very YouTube. It's like very making a YouTube video. But dude, that camera is so big. Yeah, they they it's used so to be. Large. That was actually a relatively small camera compared to like what we came from. It's so big. Yeah, this is true. Yes, yeah. it's, it's like. He was, like, holding it like this. Yeah, you know, so Mommy... uh just do that. Back in the day, when Mommy was working on film sets, um, there was uh, a lot of gruff about the woman on the film set that Mommy had to deal with. And I think this was actually a TV gig, right? This was being out on... Uh, <laughs> having to go out and cover the news kind of thing. Okay. And in the interview, like, while they were interviewing her, they wanted her to hold the camera on her shoulder for, like, the, the entirety of the interview just to show that she could, was physically capable of holding the camera, like, during the interview process. Well, um, why? No. Because no. they were, number one, because they were huge. They were, like, big kinds of things. And also because they were sexist wholly pigs. Un- wholly uncomfortable, and I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. That, that's that, yeah, that's the thing that happened. But, yeah, cameras were, 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 you know, quite. They're so large. Quite large. Quite large. Uh, wow. Quite, large. quite large. Okay, cool. So, so what do you got, Puchan? You want to okay. kick us off okay. and start talking about some stuff? And yeah, I got okay. some I got some sound clips, and I got a so, ton of stuff. I've got my important thoughts bolded because I came prepared this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'll just go through the important ones, like sort of the overall thoughts first, and then I'll do my very long run of thoughts. Okay, so fair warning. Most of these I write, like I will watch the movie, and and for some reason these are all written at like 7 p.m. when I'm sick and very confused and tired. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but like... That's a reoccurring theme in this podcast. So, yeah, we, we always like we always we watch the movie together, just chilling out, yeah. like on the couch, and don't take any notes or anything. And then we each watch the movie again, and I pull sound clips and, and write notes, and Presley writes notes and tells yeah. me if she wants clips. Yeah. Reoccurring theme is that I'm really like 
a little bit very confused in all of these, in like most of these notes from the yep. podcast. Yep, yep. So they're always very entertaining to read back. Um, I did read these back the other day, though, or not the other day, this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know what they say this okay. time. Okay, so first of all, uh, Bill has a look TM that would fit like very well in modern times, and that confuses me a lot. No, interesting. Like his like, like his aesthetic in general, like, or just his no, like, like the facial crop, features, like and... the crop top and the <laughs> thing tied around the waist and the jeans <laughs> would fit in real life. Like if I saw someone walking down the street wearing a cosplay of that, I would not question. Are it crop for a tops second. coming back? Is that a thing yes, that's happening? Of yeah, course. yeah, I've got a, like a horrible picture of me from like the eighties, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, like in my football playing <laughs> days, in my, and, and it was like in mobile alabama or something so we were near oh, the beach so i was all like tan and had a crop top Wait, on and... is to the beach? yes i didn't even yeah, know yeah, so yeah, yeah. You've, you've been there I have. In fact. oh i have yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, i didn't even know um that. okay cool so you like know. his aesthetic this yes. look is like very fitting to modern times and it like confuses me a lot just because it's so out of place to see someone in this movie that is, yeah, you know like, we had this really crazy I don't, who was i talking to about this other day like there's this crazy conversation about how uh like clothes trends come back like almost or like almost everything like trends come back yeah. and loop and it's cyclical and so crop tops are suddenly back when that's you know like in the 70s and 80s people right. were wearing crop tops uh, but it doesn't happen with the music Oh, like, no, like music, like disco's not coming back and making a resurgence, and there'll never be another like grunge kind of thing phase that people like. Music always kind of moves forward oh, and, so and does things, yeah. and, and almost everything else loops. That's kind of a weird. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. Anyway, Anyways, speaking of crop tops. Uh, speaking of crop tops. Um. So yeah, he has a look, and like it's just like it's an it's really weird. It's like if you went back in time to like Victorian London. And someone said Tiffany, which is a name, or it's like some name similar to Tiffany. Mm. That's like a name that was used mm-hmm. in Victorian London, mm-hmm. but it's still so weird because right. it's such a modern thing. Right. It's that, and it's so, it's just so strange to see someone in like an actual outfit. What's what's the quote? They had they had Dan's back then, or Brad's? <laughs> they, or what the they hell had was Chad's it? back then. They had, Chad, they had Chad's back then. Like what the? Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Shane exactly. Day. Yeah, Happy yeah. birthday, Shane Day. It was his birthday the other day. Was it? Oh, what a nice guy. I, I thought that the uh, Joan of Arc was Noah's wife was a funny line that's a good line solid line that's solid comedy that's right solid. there like I'm, I'm 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 down for that and then you ask for it seems to me the only thing you have learned is that caesar is a salad dressing dude he is not he's not a salad dressing dude he is not he's on the bottle is he i don't know i think he's on some of the bottles okay well caesar salad is named after mr caesar cardini mm-hmm. who was an italian-american restauurateur mm-hmm. and chef mm-hmm. and which is the same thing but no yeah i was thinking he about the, like i said i always i was thinking about the dog walker I like he's the you're talking he's, about. he's the guy that is the, <laughs> i don't know who this person caesar, is but they sound delightful caesar, or maybe awful caesar salads caesar this milan person sounds both delightful and awful at the same time your cousin used to love some caesar milan well, she was super into Caesar nice. and the dog, the dog walker. I do know who Jackson <laughs> Galaxy is. Oh, I don't have any idea who that is. He's the cat right. guy from My Cat from Hell. He's okay, really so cute. here I'm gonna I'm gonna start launching into. Uh, oh, uh, already? Yeah, okay. no, we'll, we'll go back and forth, right? So, um, like when his dad was looking for his keys at the beginning, it was very lost, like right? Like oh, they're setting, they're planting seeds <gasps> for stuff that's gonna happen, and like the time travel loops and stuff. Like okay. you know, it's there. That was an interesting thing to watch, and I felt like you know, it feels like the first time. Where, like, I remembered when I was watching that, when we were watching it together, that they were behind that and it was all going to loop back and stuff. And oh, I that's couldn't so say cool. anything, right? Um, so I felt like not being able to, to clue you in on what was going on oh, there. That's valid. I thought that's it was cool. pretty funny. Um, and then uh, when uh, there, it's like the whatever, the flashback or flash forward. Or <laughs> oh, my God. I'm getting what? so confused. <laughs> Uh, when uh, uh, George Carlin was in the future world and they were about to send him back because the separation was oh, imminent, yeah. right? I, I actually got to that, that, that quote. It is time. Their okay. separation is imminent. <sighs> okay. Like, Here's what, you got something for that? Go. Quick, yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. It bugs me. Because if you can time travel, no, this then why what would I'm you say, say the time is now? This is exactly what I'm going to say. Like, why did they have to wait for a certain period of time to say, oh, now it's time to time travel to this place when, time, when you, you can, can go any time you want to? Right? Right? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. This is exactly what I was going to say. But, like, that said, that's not. this is not the only time that comes up, right? Um, it comes up much later. Here, let me, uh, here, it? I'll do this one. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, that clock, the clock in San Dimas is always running. I think that's Got a cool it? mechanic. That's what I'm... All right. So, 
It's weird. At the end of that too, he's like, you got it? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, I don't (laughs) got it. Like what? That doesn't make any sense at all. I have a time machine. Right. I can go anytime I want. Like he was, he was saying that like in, I'm, I'm giving you a time machine and you can spend the next 48 hours going anywhere you want in time. But in 48 hours of your real time as a human being, 48 hours will have passed in Sandema, so you have to come back and be here to give your presentation. And it's like a really interesting little twist on the time travel thing. I like it. And so that kind of ties in, too, with what just happened where, oh, now's the time you've got to go back and try and save them. Gotcha. Like there is something about you can't really just go anywhere from anywhere there are certain link linkages or something that has to happen and so like there's some depth to the the I idea dead. there is either some level of depth to the level of time travel that happens in bill and ted or they were just there being like look we got to kill a couple of minutes here and they can only go back to this time like how do we explain that they there's some time pressure how does someone with a time machine have time pressure? Well, let's yeah. just say that time just runs while they're doing it, right? Yeah. They either just came up with it as a writing mechanic just to drive the story so that it didn't seem like they had, you know, they could take a hundred years to get ready to do this book report. It's not really a book report, but whatever. Well, I uh, they eight. Well, yeah, they would be a hundred years old, but aside <laughs> from that. showing up. Yes, they, <laughs> they, they would be so, so great. <laughs> oh, that um, so much. Uh, aside from like that element, like they could have taken a week to do it. They had to have some kind of time pressure. And so they had this just sort of throwaway line. It's, oh, hey, it wasn't really a throwaway. George Carlin was very serious <laughs> about it. Like the time runs, you only have 48 hours yeah, of your like- wristwatch's time that's going to die right. in, later and screw you up in sort of a way we won't acknowledge too significantly. <laughs> it just um, sort of happens. But it's like a, they've got a cool mechanic yeah. going, right? They have something, there's some thought and something interesting and some yeah. twist on time travel happening that I thought was kind of cool. That's rad. I All like right. that. That's why I'm glad we came to the same conclusion. Yes. It's like, it's weird, but it's rad. Yeah, yeah. Does um, okay. So, uh, important thoughts, important thoughts. Okay. So, going back a t- little bit to what you were saying, um, is that when you were talking about his dad, I have just like an entire... Like the cop? Yeah. Yeah. I have an entire section of notes. Not the just- pedophile? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> Please let me finish my thoughts. Okay. Um, so it's, I have this whole section of notes. It's about as long as my phone screen that is just like bad, go away, bad, <laughs> disliked. <laughs> so I really did not like him. I you still didn't like don't. his dad? No. The cop dad. Did that not. was going to send him to military school. I did. But that was like a whole thing too. Like at the time, there were all these things about military schools and sending your kids to military school. And that, that was the uh, Twisted Sister video it was probably sometime <laughs> around this. We're not going to take it where there's lots of yelling. And there was no. even a shot. Like if we were doing a video thing and not just this high guys on the. YouTube channel. If Hi. if we were if this was not a podcast and it was more of a video that we were doing, I would show there's the one shot where his dad's threatening to send him to military school where like Keanu's facing into the camera and his dad is here facing him yeah. talking to him. Like it's a very extreme shot. Yeah. And his dad is like yelling at him and he's looking forward and then he kind of even glances over with his eyes but doesn't want to turn his head. Like it's a very military like thing, right. like his dad running the Remind house. Remind me to thing. tell yeah. you about that later because I have a connection to that that I'm not allowed to say on the YouTube channel. Oh, okay. All right. Rock and roll. Um so yeah, that was the thing that happened, and that made me. I just really didn't like him, especially in my very tired state. If, if I don't know, I've been sick recently. I'll let so. you in on a little secret. You weren't supposed to like him. I know, but I still don't. <laughs> it, I still don't it, like it him. It worked the way it was supposed to. I still don't. All right, like I got another him. seed plant. Oh boy! Early at the same kind of the scene is it's time to go. Be excellent to each other. Uh, How y'all do? So they had it, like you know, they're like laying they say dudes. The, yeah, dudes. dudes. I've got a, I've got a really funny one coming up. Uh, but yeah, they've got like this cool thing where they're laying the groundwork for kind of what was going to happen yeah. in their utopia okay. of the future. Yeah. Okay. So my next, uh, that's so cool. Okay. Can we talk about the other dad for a second? Okay. Not yeah, really okay. the other dad, but the other like, like the subplot of the other dad and the stepmom that never went anywhere. Yeah. Like it felt like maybe in the original script that something came out of that to make that an important thing and it just kind of faded away. You did get to highlight like friend culture that is just constantly bothering your friend. No, no, that's where I'm at. You ready? Remember when I asked her to the prom? Shut up, Ted! <laughs> that's the friend culture, friend that's culture. That's exactly what you were talking about. I love when we're on the same page. We're on the same wavelength like there. Nice. Like, I just thought that was... Because there was a whole sequence of shut up Ted's there, right? Yeah. But, but remember when I asked your mom to the prom? Like, that's a great line. Again, <laughs> that's up. really funny. And then shut wrong. up, Ted. It's so good. That's a really good Friend one. culture. Yeah, 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 I love it. All right. Um, okay, so my thought... My next thought on this list, unless you have more, is uh, teen speech is like... Very different, but also very similar, and it's really yeah. Confusing. So this was also I'm like aware this, this is, is an 
actually exactly how everyone spoke all the time. No, so this is valley speech, right? So, like, there's a movie Valley Girl, <laughs> and the valley is the valley. Like, San Dimas is not all that far from here, right? Like, it's a... Is it Wait, yeah. it's a place? Yeah, it's a real place, and what? it's not far from here. it's a place? Here. Although they actually shot most of this in Arizona, oddly enough. I think the Circle K was actually in San Dimas. I don't know. Are those real places? Circle Ks? I've never been to So, them. yeah, Circle Ks are, yeah, yeah. They're like one. a Seven Eleven, right? They're a combini. Um, so, uh... Uh, yeah, like there's like Valley speak, like Valley Girl, like gag me with a spoon and stuff. What else? What else did Valley Girl say? Do you remember? <laughs> Is that the only? <laughs> there was lots of likes, uh, like totally. Like they sounded like totally. Bill and Ted. Yeah, yeah. But it, this was a very like Southern California version of the uh, uh, speech pattern. Yeah. Not just teen speak. Like we didn't talk like this in Memphis. <laughs> I guess I guess I would say, okay. um, but we were aware of it. <laughs> they are two California Valley boys, the very best of friends. That ties into something I'm going to say later. I'm okay. Planting a seed. All right, you're, now you're planting seeds. <laughs> are we going to time travel later? <laughs> yes. Loop back to the beginning of this podcast. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. So speaking of the Circle K, I've got a thing. Oh. This is another one of my favorite this lines. Seven Eleven, right? There. You ready? Yes. Excuse me. When did the Mongols rule China? <laughs> okay, this ties into one of my thoughts. I just work here. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Like the idea of hanging out in front of the Circle K and just asking randos that walk by your history homework questions oh God, is, so is such a bit, right? Well, it's kind of It's so... It's see, I, no, I have that in my notes. Like that's the problem. Like the problem is that you're at the Circle K and you should go to the Mini Mart where the smarter people shop, right? Because they can help you out better with your homework. Right. Like, I, like it's, it's so not good. like a beautiful delivery. I mean, it is actually a pretty good delivery, right? Right, but like it, the the concept, like I would watch a whole movie of that. That's like Jay and Silent Bob <laughs> yes, stuff, right? Yes, that's maybe. like a whole. Like, I, I, I'm glad we. Okay, what was your thought on that? I'm sorry. My thought is that is like at first when I saw this, I was so perplexed as to why they were doing that. I'm like, why? And then I remembered. They didn't have the internet. <laughs> they couldn't Google it. <laughs> it like, so, like, this is their internet? This is, is a the revelation. Circle K peep shopping queue? <laughs> yes. It was like a revelation to me, though, because I was like, they can't Google it. Oh, you're too smart. They don't know. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I was like, so confused and upset about it. That's so funny. Oh, haha. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. I'm I've got more Circle K out. stuff. No, <laughs> please keep going with your Circle K. All right. So, I've got. Save it for uh, your Circle K podcast. Oh, this is, this is one of my. <laughs> I should do a Circle K podcast. <laughs> this is one of my funny uh, uh, deliveries, right? So listen, Rufus, that's his name. I keep George Carlin's name, character <laughs> name was Carlin. Rufus. Listen to Rufus's delivery of this. Greetings, my excellent friends. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> my excellent friends. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that, that, that like, so- Greetings, my excellent friends. <laughs> like that seems like it's playing into at some point one of them is like gone. a snake like a, a lizard person <laughs> just dying well, into like the alien lizard dead, person theory but that's pretty rad too no like I'm the, like it's it's almost like George Carlin's like oh yeah there's two of them <laughs> like greetings Dan my excellent Morgan. friend oh the other guy <laughs> like he forgot that they they're so me. interchangeable he didn't even realize there oh, were two that's people where your standing thought there process was going my thought by process. Scott and Steve yeah, my thought process was one of them died, and so there's only one. Oh. So that was my thought process, which is a little bit different. <laughs> he can't see the other one. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just a split personality movie gimmick. The same person. Oh, that's really funny. All right, and then my, here's my last. I think this is my last Circle K, which I think is pretty good. Uh, well, no, there's actually one other thing that happens at the Circle K, but this is a okay. direct. So this is one of this. This oh, is, is it this clip? This is also in. This is also in competition for my favorite line. Strange yes. things are afoot at the Circle K. Like even like <laughs> listen one. listen the to the, listen to the background the music. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. <laughs> like things are kind of going wonky, right? He's got no oh. Twilight Zone all of a sudden, <laughs> and like every once in a while, like especially uh, Bill. But, like, they burst out with this, like, oh, strange things are afoot. Like, that's a weird thing for, for him oh, to be you saying. Do not, you, I would not doubt for a second that any dumb teenager in this day and age knows how to say strange things are afoot. Right, that's but, how we are. But, like, there's this thing of, like, they, especially, like I said, uh, uh, you know, Bill, like, speaking kind of above himself, right? Like, yeah. the Esquire thing, Bill Esquire. S. Preston, William S. Preston Esquire, right? Which, in America, it means you're an attorney, Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what It's kind of like the MD kind of thing for a doctor or oh, something cool. like Esquire. Like, it, it's got a historical what is root. Is name Esquire? Uh, no, 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 no. He's saying Esquire. Oh. Like, he's putting that as a title on his own name. I was like, when it's Introducing he- himself as, like, it, it's like a nobleman. It, it, old, old school way, it, it's a nobleman in Europe. 
people would kind of put that after their names. Yeah, I know a lot about noblemen. But in like in America, it's really kind of reserved for attorneys. Oh, Um, weird. Well, I was thinking it was like when you give. You just thought it was his name. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like when you. It was like junior or whatever. Interesting. When you give your when you give your son like a real fancy name. Yeah, right. It's just like Esquire. I thought that would be awesome. Esquire. We should have named Cooper Esquire. Well, no, not his first name. We'll have to give him another, another middle a, name. It was a title that was given to him <laughs> his name. Like, Junior. No, you can't Esquire. give people titles as part of their name. That's junior. not how that works. Junior. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. It was like right. Junior, yeah, sure. but Okay, what, what, do, what do you have out of this? <laughs> the Circle K? Yeah, are you done at the Circle K? I'm done with the Circle K. You are you, will going. you ask me for one more quote from the Circle K? Yeah, so keep I'm gonna going. Play. What number are we thinking of? 69, dude! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Never gets old. Hell yeah! 69 jokes and 420 jokes will forever be part of the, the lore. You're so funny. I, I, funny, I got a, funny I've got a little side story here on this. Oh, boy, uh, okay. And, and then we're going to stop talking about this because oh, you're my 12-year-old work. daughter. Well... Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, we at work, the, the new oh, at office... At work, at your yeah, literal... Okay. My job, my literal job. <laughs> I say literal job. for all of this crap that we do. Um, the... Uh, uh, we got a. I got a new office, right? So yes. I'm, I'm I'm working at a new place. I almost physically. just said spoilers. I actually, I actually have a new job, and and I, I've been at this job for like two weeks, and we've already moved to a new office. So it's a new job. It's a well, new oh, new you know. my new right. new job. For some reason, I almost just said spoilers. Yeah, I don't want to spoil. I'm not telling you where I'm working. <laughs> Spoiling uh, your job. But we have We're like a. So there's a garage, and in the garage, the spaces are numbered. And Ooh. when I parked like two days ago this week. There was like one random car that was like halfway up the thing parked all by himself. <laughs> oh, and I was like, what the hell? And then I looked and sure enough, he was parked in spot 69. That's me. Like somebody said, okay, I'm going to walk the extra like 40 feet to the me. escalator or the escalator. It's not an escalator in our parking garage. <laughs> we don't have that. We're not that kind of place. To the elevator and or stairs uh, just because oh I want to park God. in this spot. And I guarantee you that person parks in that spot every day. And I that guarantee you at me. some point in the next couple of weeks, I will like eat lunch in my car so that I can walk watch and see who this person is and what this person That's, looks like. I, I, I ghostwrite this person's life. <laughs> That's me. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. I need to, no, I need I to go up a couple of floors that. and see if there's a 420 up there and <gasps> see if somebody parks in that. Beautiful. Um, uh, yeah, no, I absolutely would not hesitate to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah. so my thought right, about, ahead. my last thought about this is that the first two digits of my phone combination are 69. Okay. So, yeah, you know Spoilers. I appreciate that. Spoilers for my phone combination. <laughs> You and, you and losing phones, you might want to <laughs> not tell people that kind of well, stuff. Well, you don't know the next two digits. This is true. But if those are easier to solve. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, you that would be easy to guess knowing my personality. That's right. Um, okay, so uh, my next thing is something that um, was... I was sitting and I was watching this movie... And this thing came into my brain, like a message from a deity mm-hmm. in the sky. And I, was, I had to write it down immediately. And that was two bros chilling in a phone booth, five, part ca- five feet apart because they're not gay. Nice. Like, <laughs> they're so not five feet apart. <laughs> no, they're like two, like an inch apart. Especially when there's like 15 of them. Because they're not gay. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was not my thought. Hmm? That did not come from my brain. Uh, it just was bestowed. You were just the vehicle <laughs> yes, this, by which that thought yes, was manifest. This knowledge was bestowed upon me nice, by nice. an otherworldly So alien. Okay, so you can go back and watch our Supernatural podcast. No, BuzzFeed Unsolved. Oh, BuzzFeed Unsolved. Please do not associate me with that show. No, no, no. I thought it was... It was BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural. Yeah, but that's not what the I show just said. What, how are you yelling at me? That's exactly <laughs> what I just said. Because it sounded like you were talking about the show Supernatural. But they do Supernatural and they do true crime, right? Yes. Like crime BuzzFeed Unsolved. You have to specify the BuzzFeed Unsolved part because I thought you were talking about the show Supernatural. Mm. Yeah, we, neither of I, us watched the show Supernatural yet. So yeah, we, we can't do that. But yeah, BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural. That was one of my assignments a while back. And, yes. and you get to actually hear the clip two that is bros, two bros chilling in a hot, hot tub, tub. Five feet apart because they're not gay. And it's actually pretty, it's, it's good. Now you don't it's have good. to listen to it because Presley just sang it to you. But yes. if, if you want to, go listen to that one. That one, that one was pretty good. Go listen to it. Um, oh, another thought that I totally forgot I had is this movie highlights the fact that like no one in history speaks English really well in a way I didn't expect it to. Like not a lot of historical figures speak English. And there's a thing that doesn't cross my you, mind You mean a lot. the ones that weren't in England? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Yes, right. exactly. <laughs> they don't speak English, and that's something that like never crosses me or my friends' minds. It's interesting because you like, watch like all these historical yeah. docudramas and everybody speaking English right? in them, right? And it's like they don't. <laughs> they don't speak English, right? Hey, you know what? Hercules Mulligan wasn't black. <laughs> well, I know that, but 
No one speaks English, and that's really weird. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Oh, I'm saving that quote for the very, very end. Okay, hold on. I got more. Uh, So this is the first time, too. Like, right around the the Circle K was the first time I really started noticing that they spoke in unison throughout almost the entire movie. Yeah, they do. They're just like that. Which also goes back to your idea. There's only one of them. I mind. Yeah, like, there's really only one. The other one's dead, and he's a figment of the other guy's imagination. No, that's really sad. Don't do that. (laughs) No angst in my podcast. Or, oh, I 100%. Or it was some kind of hive mind thing. Like, they've got one brain that they share. I guarantee you that one of the 20 fix on AO3 I checked is mm. about that somehow. Do, so there's, there is there's Bill a and little, Ted fanfic? Yes, mm. absolutely. There's mm. actually, well, there's like 68, but there's is there 20. Ben, Bill and Ted slash fanfic? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's There's 20 tags. There's 20 fix under that tag, which is the one I checked. But there's probably more under the whole tag. Mm-hmm. I ch- checked the whole tag and there's this one gigantic crossover fix that had like a mile of different character tags and so mm-hmm. I just sort of was like, yeah, I'm not finding anything else in this. Are there, are there any cool names for them? Did you get far enough to see if there's a cool slash name for them? Um, <laughs> bed. I don't yeah, know. Right <laughs> <laughs> right, because I'm going to go, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I'm never going to read Bill and Ted slash fanfic. Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. So, oh, no. If you want to if you want to dive into that world and tell me what... Cool. I did not read it, but I'm yeah. aware of its existence. Yeah. I like actually the names. Really... I don't really care much for the, the, the actual actually... writing, but I like the names. There's a real... Sometimes oh, there's, they're clever. There's a real quaint little fan, uh, fandom for it on Tumblr. It's really mm-hmm. nice. It's real good. Okay, so they, uh, they go back in time the yes. first time. Like Rufus... <laughs> takes them where did he take them it felt like the first time it felt like the first time they went back in time and i didn't grab the quote when they're like billy the kid you're handling time travel i don't really know that was a really good line Uh, i've got a good grief i don't really know we haven't really you know i we really haven't done any study of like the wild west like wyatt earp and okay okay i know what i need to know we haven't done any of that stuff i know what i need to know and doc holiday I don't know who those people are. What I do know is that the Wild Red West... Red Dead Redemption. Okay, well, I've played Red Dead Redemption. But I, what I do know is that homosexuality was very rampant in cowboy days. Like, very, very much so. And it's not <laughs> it's not taught in schools. But it absolutely was really gay. And that's what I know about cowboys. You're just talking about the Heath Ledger movie. I'm not! <laughs> that's a fact about cowboys! It's my... Okay, well, I know it's High Noon. I know about McCree. Yeah, there's a really funny... A uh, there's there's, there's a really great cowboys. movie called Russell's Rhapsody that I think it's Tom Berenger. I think is one of the funniest westerns. But it's it's like... Uh, uh, what the hell was the thing that... That we just Ready Player One. Oh yes, where like you have to watch a bunch of real westerns before you can watch the really good like commentary on western movies. So what Russell's Rhapsody one? is a comedy commentary on the western genre. What and the one I uh, wait, wait, wait! I'm not done yet. Okay. High Plains Drifter is phenomenal as a commentary on the western genre, uh, but you have to sort of understand the western. Genre. I love High Plains Drifter. It's one of my favorite movies. Which was the one, that one like animated Western movie that you made me watch like half of that was a commentary on Western movies? Tombstone. Yeah, I didn't really get it because I hadn't seen any Western movies before. Yeah, Toonstone. Toonstone. Toombstone. It was funny, but I like didn't get the inside Yeah, I know. I've got to get you caught up on all your Western movies. my Western. Yeah. (laughs) My Western show. But the reason I say that is because in Russell's Rhapsody, there's a whole ongoing gag about uh, uh, homosexuality in the cowboy cowboy, cowboy community. Howboy. Howboy. In the Howboy. (laughs) There's a lot. (laughs) Howboy. (laughs) Gay Cowboy. Homosexual cowboy. Wait, cowboy. Right, right, here, I'll play uh, your least favorite. Fact. No. Yeah. I don't like that. So they went there. They went there. Again, this is the uh, the, 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 the don't time. Don't remember the context of that, though. That was, uh, it came right after this quote, which you kind of like. Oh, Ted. Oh. Dead, I get it now. Yeah. So see, they were also happy that they were both okay. That they hugged oh, and said and some then they, then they have to, some then they have to have the, yeah, then they have to put the the, the, the space between them. And yeah, then, they needed uh, some uh, necessary homophobia because this movie is not gay. It's one hundred percent straight. I think this was a good uh, ad lib. I, I swear, this last line is an ad lib in this one because he actually hits him over the head with like a turkey leg. Yeah, when he knocks the guy out in that scene, and he they do this. Dude, you're totally throwing that dude in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that just took too long. Nice. Like, that took way too long for he's a total bonehead. Like, you totally bone that dude in the head. And I didn't even realize the first time I watched it. This is the first time I've noticed. Because I just, it looked like when I was watching it today to put notes together, it looked like he hit him with a chunk of a loaf of bread. Looks and like I was like, why is it a me. loaf of bread? Why is he hitting a guy with a loaf of bread? That's really hard bread. <laughs> 
and then glory. I looked again, and I was like, oh, it looks like one of those turkey legs. And then when I played forward again, and he's like, oh, you totally boned that guy in the head. I'm like, oh, it's, it's a, a bone. pun. That's, that's it's a pun. Well, well played. Okay. Do you want to go through my notes in chronological order? Because we're just all over the place. Well, yeah, we jumped way down. But, I, okay, I'm going to bring us back to a little bit of chronology. Chronology. <laughs> Let's, sure. let's do some chronology <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, to get back. Like so great. So I, I also love the idea that this is where you first get the idea that they're going. I love the idea that this is where you first get the idea <laughs> that uh, their idea is to just go back in time and kidnap people. <laughs> So right. that they can pass their history class. Like, don't ask them questions. Just kidnap <laughs> right. them straight just up. randomly going to go kidnap people that's throughout great. history and bring them forward. Like, I think that's really funny that they came up with that. It's and so that's where good. they wanted to go. And then, uh, so they go get Napoleon by mistake first. They didn't mean to get him Yeah, so Napoleon. Napoleon was an accident. But that's why God, they decided whole... that, oh, hey, we should totally God. do this now and go kidnap all these people because we got Napoleon now. And so they have the kid, the little brother is going to look after Napoleon. Like and the so, actual straight up Napoleon. And it, it, the actual, no like the real this. Napoleon. Yeah, no one has any concerns about this at all. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the, in exchange for looking out for Napoleon, listen to what they offer him. Here is some money. <laughs> take, take here, some. here is some monies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see monies. I know, but. Here is some monies. And it, here is some monies. <laughs> Well, you had to think about what it was for a second. Yeah, right. What do you call this stuff again? Oh, monies. It's monies yeah. that I'm going to give you to, to look after Napoleon. It. I thought that was a pretty good one, too. I was pretty happy That's with it. That's good. That. That's valid. And then when they're trying to decide who, go, who to go get next, I had to explain this one to you, even. We got Sigmund food. Beef oven. Beef oven. <laughs> like, I heard this as beef oven. I was right. like, who's a beef oven? Like, they're going to go get beef oven. And you're like, what? And I go, Beethoven. You're like, oh, oh my God. Like, when we first watched it, it was pretty I funny. It, I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I don't know, really, I'm going to nitpick real quick. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit like there's two nitpicks in for one. All right. Press let's go. one. Okay. Right. So, nitpick number one two nits in the hand. It's <laughs> worth I don't know. Saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So my nitpick real quick, and they're both about Greece because, of course, um, obligatory Greece nitpicks is, A, um, hmm. they say Socrates the whole time. Well, they say Socrates. But Socrates. Everyone, that's how you say it. <laughs> you say Socrates. Socrates. <laughs> you don't like, say Socrates. You say Socrates. <laughs> sure. It's not pronounced Socrates. Socrates. That made me mad. Because he said his name the right way. He's like, my name is Socrates. Well, I like when they said, oh, Socrates. That I, He's un- in the book. Look him up under Socrates. Right? That's really good. <laughs> it's it's it under Socrates. Socrates. So that's funny. That's funny. No, stick. Socrates is fine because it's like a funny way to mispronounce it. Socrates. But most people think it's Socrates. Mm. And it's not Socrates. It's Socrates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Nipping number two. They go back to Greece, and everything is white and washed out mm-hmm. like the artifacts are. They had color in Greece. Mm, interesting. They had color in Greece. Yeah. Like, they even restored an old uh, Gre- Greco-Roman, I don't remember which one it's from, like, in a statue from that time period, and yeah. it had colors on it and looked kind of like an amusement park thing, but... Yeah. Like, like when you see the Egyptian things all painted up and stuff. Like, mommy and I saw colors. these really beautiful mosaics. I think in Herculaneum, they, oh, nice. where they recovered some of the mosaic floors and things, and they were just gorgeous. And they were like super colorful and had yeah. a bunch of really cool they stuff. They had colors there. in Greece. Nice. That's a good call, Pichon. Well done. That I mean, me. God knows where they were when they shot that. Like, there was some amusement park somewhere that had, right? a, had a Greece thing. Yeah, but there's colors in Greece, and that's what bugs me about everything ever. Is that like they always historical accuracy? Yeah, well, historical. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I really do like the way that they got out of historical accuracy completely by just like putting them in a rand in a mall and then getting them all arrested. But that was kind of the point, right? The point yeah. was, hey guys, and they even I didn't really even notice it when we watched it together, but the, when I rewatched it to take notes, they said, okay guys, you just go hang out and look around and then tell us what you think later. Yeah, because that was kind of the whole point of the the book report, right? Or the, yeah. the report it was that to they tell were doing. what a historical figure. That's a weird history report. It is, it, but it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool, right. but it's like a weird history report. It's yeah. like writing fan fiction about 
like historical figures. That's, exactly, that's your yeah, assignment. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think Joan of Arc would think of the world today? Like that's an interesting um, thought experiment to have kids do and put together. I'm, yeah. I'm all for that. I don't know. I've about never that. been in a thing where like at the end of the class we all meet in the auditorium and do like giant presentations <laughs> and stuff. I never had that <laughs> class, especially not in high school. Um, I mean, I've certainly written reports okay. and things like that, and had to deliver reports, but never like that kind of thing. Gosh, I really need to be going in chronological order. I right? have, I have more work. than once in my life, and mommy can vouch for this, been in the situation where like the final thing that I hand in in a class determines whether or not I'm going to be taking that class again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that. I hate the idea of that. I hate all of that. Yeah, I was not. Uh, the, I was cool. not the best student. Uh, no, that, can I? I'm gonna expose ever, you. Real ever quick. passed through most of my schools you. that you I was just, in. I'm gonna expose you. You straight up never did your homework ever. Yeah, like, but, that I mean, was a that conscious was like, decision. Yes, it was. Philo- that was a philosophical <laughs> disagreement <laughs> that I had with several of the fine institutions that I attended. <laughs> like you just didn't do it. Yeah, well, I mean, like my argument was, if I learn the material and I can pass the test, I shouldn't have to do the homework because the the purpose of the homework is to help you learn the material. And so, if I learn the material, why am I having to do the homework? And so they, they would say, like, look, it's going to count 10% off of your grade. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take a B. Like, I, that's fine. If I don't have to do homework all semester, I'm 100% okay with taking a B. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I knew what the consequences were. I was willing to accept the consequences. I may have argued a little bit about those consequences. But yeah. uh, aside it's just from like that. wild. I didn't know you yeah. could do that. Uh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can do what you want. Yeah. They could have failed me, too, You're though. You're not so. my dad. <laughs> You're not my supervisor. <laughs> Um, you're gonna have to ask my agent. You're gonna have to start watching Archer. I have not. Talking but that things. is a set. Like, okay, so it's something you will learn if you've ever been on set more than once is that there are set jokes. TM. This yeah. is going somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's set jokes. TM. That everyone. Yeah. Well, there's one kid that always says the set jokes. Yeah. And one of them is like, if someone asks you to do anything, you have to say you're gonna have to talk to my agent. No, this is the uh, the donkey hee haw guy <laughs> in. Uh, y- y- What's the? It's a wonderful life. I wanted to like, say Ready Player One. We kept talking about it's a wonderful life. That one guy keeps doing the same bit like his whole life, and like, why is he doing the donkey thing? It's just the one guy that does the same bit. Right. It's exactly what you're talking about. There's the set jokes, and they're really bad. All of them. Yeah, no, th- that was horrible, and you didn't make any sense even in the context of that movie. Right. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> okay. So I guess we're just uh, screwing chronological order. Yeah, we're kind of going. Like Not I thought, really. I, I've got. I thought it kind of dragged during the medieval time stuff. Yeah. Like trying to find the babes and, and deal going. with the like king and the execution and the, oh, oh my God, okay. it's them so and they saved them. That. And like, I didn't, I don't know, that, <laughs> that, 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 that got a little slow for me. Oh, I forgot about that. But then they made up for it by doing like four montages in a row. They're like, yeah. oh my God, we spent all the movie in medieval times. <laughs> we got to <laughs> speed fast. up a little bit in this third act. <laughs> it was really funny. Okay. Um, so, uh, there we go. I found it. I found it. Okay. So, um, the part where Ted just, like, dies. Well, he doesn't, yeah, but yeah, everyone yeah. thinks Don't he died. Don't be dead, Ted. Don't be dead, Ted. So, a little bit of backstory for this. I've been watching a lot of horror content mm-hmm. and, like, mm-hmm. psychological... Uh, mm-hmm. So, stuff like Doki Doki Literature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stars, is that really cute? And like, right. it's really creepy. Right. So, my brain immediately registered that as, oh, my God, he just died. There this never was t- a Ted. <laughs> there never was a Ted. <laughs> but my brain was just like, he just died. Wow, this movie took a turn. I, I guess that's why Dad showed it to me, because it's, like, psychological <laughs> horror. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I was like, um, and, so, and then I have this thought, which is like, what if he just dies and like Bill is sobbing and mourning over his corpse and the goofy soundtrack is still playing behind it? And, and it's this, this Seinfeld, <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Yeah. <laughs> the Saeed joke exactly. soundtrack. Exactly, except like... someone's dying. <laughs> and, that was my, um, and then like, truly, the reaction to, and this is my favorite part about this movie. Really, is that. Um, Bill's reaction to Ted, like Ted's corpse on the floor in front of him, is bogus, highness, most non triumphant. Like, highness. Is, yeah. Anus. <laughs> you know? I say what I want, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Don't tell me what I can't do. Your Dad. highness. <laughs> I guess, listen, I can't say words. Do you expect, I, mean, I heard that word like 80 times in that movie, but anus, you can't expect dude. me to say anus. it correctly. Highness. Michael Mel says that word, and does you he? can't expect oh, me to say funny. it correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is a heinous night. Oh, he does. Data that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as a tune. So um, this is, they also, like, they jump out of medieval times, and that's when they go to the future that they created. Yeah, just and for, so like, a thinking, second. Yeah, 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 but I was thinking, like, um, two, I had two thoughts during that scene. One, one was, I know there are all these people that think about, like, how Star Trek will shape future generations 
in terms of like the ideology of mm-hmm. acceptance and dealing with other species and races and, and, and people and women on the ship and equality and like meritocracy and the ideas of exploring but not in, interfering and doing these kinds of things is kind of an interesting idea that people like base their lives upon, mm-hmm. right? And so I thought about what would a society look like that treated Bill and Ted's excellent adventure in the same way, oh, God. which is sort of what this society has done. Like, how do you take these two guys and, and base your entire society upon like and them like... and how you're going to live? And apparently you play a lot of air guitar. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you don't. Like, you're not, excellent to each other. They're not really playing air guitar. They're just sort of going. It's a weird little riff. It's like. It's, but there's like a, at the like, bottom, there's a little, whew, they kind of speed up, like right when they kind of hit the string. It's so weird. But it's a weird thing. And then I thought, like. They just keep one speed. W- what I would like to have seen is, like, halfway through that scene, everybody is just like, wait, these are the jackasses that we're basing our society <laughs> on? Like, it really? Edit they, point. They, like, they don't, they don't realize, oh my God, these are, these are the guys that. Like that, it would seem like at some point somebody in the room would have just turned to the guy next to him and went, "Really, these guys?" Like, we oh, should, I would not hesitate. We've to made just a be horrible like, sure. mistake. We've, well, you know, in adult life, you get to that point where it's like the planets this might have as well aligned. Be happening. Throw back to the oh, there's another podcast. There's another horrible mistake coming along. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Well, you see, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have questioned it, honestly. I would have just been like, yeah, sure, okay. That Let's guy? Yeah, and the other hits. thing that happened, like, right around this time was the <laughs> the movie had, there were, like, a lot of bits that they wanted to play, like right? the N- Napoleon eating the Napoleon <laughs> Sunday thing, the Ziggy Biggie. The two, the two of the waiters that were doing the Ziggy Biggie song yeah. are the writers. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just found that out. I think that's, that's really so funny. Wild. They kind of put themselves in as the little Ziggy Biggie guys. Uh but uh, that several scenes, like right in here, because uh, I noticed them, that it was probably other places too, but they just kind of ended. Yeah. Like the scene just kind of faded. Like right. everybody does like the Scooby-Doo like chuckle. And then there's like a second where like, you just expect people to kind of look around at each other <laughs> to see if the scene's over. And then it cuts. Like they didn't edit it fast enough. Like, oh, are we done? Is that it? And then the next scene starts. It's <laughs> a bad thing yeah. to do. Don't do that. It's about acting. Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that seems like that happened to me a couple of times yeah. towards this part of the movie. All right. So I'm going to start reading random notes in chronological order. Just the important ones. Yeah, yeah, go. Okay. So first of all, the like hot special effects at the beginning of the movie, it just straight up looks like a doorknob. It does look a lot like it a just, It's just a doorknob. Yeah. It looks like the bad guy in, in the Tron video game, but you don't know what that means. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Who do you think I am? Yeah. Um, someone who would play the Tron video game. <laughs> right. um, so, yeah, in the future, all videos look like really bad slideshows. Like, it looked like a mm. really weird, like, not quite a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, yeah. But it just didn't look, it was not, yeah. like, whatever. Yep. Um, Camera's Baby, we've already covered that. You can hear the smoke machine a little bit. And like the channels of time or whatever the hell they called them. Yeah. It was, yeah. Was a whole, it was a little Doctor Whoey, though. Yeah. It was, it was a, a little, little Doctor Whoey. Shebang. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, there's a cuckoo clock at some point. What's there? I don't remember. Yeah, that. there's a cuckoo clock. Okay. And like, does anyone own a cuckoo clock? Yeah, Nami and Poppy used to have a cuckoo, a cuckoo they did? clock. Yeah, they did. I'm just like. Yeah, they did. No one. I've never. They probably burned in the fire. Oh, but rip. boy, they definitely had a, a cuckoo clock. I, I have lived in a house with a cuckoo clock. Um, <laughs> it's I not know. that annoying. It's not that bad. Oh, you get used to it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, there. I mean, it's just like the clock sound in movies. There's like the little. Oh uh, like, yeah. yeah. Cuckoo okay. Noise. But it, no one owns a cuckoo clock anymore. Ever. Yep. Um. So okay. So um, this is more me being mad about his dad. So, oh, so the, what I found very very confusing is that nobody in the entire town took French class. Like, no one knows what Napoleon's saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm not shocked by French. that. Like, maybe in the high school, there would have been some people. There's probably a French teacher in the back of the room laughing at, like, his little bits <laughs> right. that nobody else got. But, right? yeah, I don't know. I'm not shocked by that. Like, I'm just really shocked. Well, I mean, I know I know three, at least three people that speak French. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, like, really weird to me that someone would so not I'm just going to refrain from all commentary on the French language and the French people. In, in French deference, in the, in the deference, French languages. In, in There's too to many mommy. vowels. In Clean def- up your vowels, French. In deference to mommy on this podcast, I'm going to keep okay. my keep my mouth shut. I'm not. On, I'm going to talk about the French language on now. Said topic. Okay, so my I've French- got a, I've got a really funny bit for oh, a trip boy. to France, though. But my I'm French, not going to tell any of you. My French hot take is that it's just uh, Spanish, but in cursive <laughs> and with, like a million vowels. Right. Um. That's what French is. Right on. Um. One of them. Oh, this is like so. Ted's brother is like disproportionately short compared to him. Mm-hmm. He's so short. Mm-hmm. Maybe Cooper's it was a Napoleon kind of short joke. To you? Well, <laughs> right. no, but he's like ten. I don't know what you're with age differences. Well, he's like ten. Right. I don't know how old he is. And he's just—he's really short. Um, 
Oh, um, so for uh, important thing is that the armor in the medieval stuff doesn't have a back. Like there's just not a back. Because mm-hmm. yeah, you're not supposed to run away. <laughs> You're right. supposed to be a valiant knight and not run. I and you have you to have, like, like, as much uh, uh, someone can go behind lightweight you. As, as possible. Yeah, I guess. But, like, yeah. You want to save you. weight, That's and dumb. it's probably not off the front Yeah, that you want to save weight. <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, if you turn and run, you deserve to get stabbed in the back. Yeah. I'm like, just making just, that up. Well, just based someone on, could just, go behind you. Just purely based on the paladins like, that I've played in D&D. <laughs> That's what I assume is probably what they did in medieval times. Paladins are great. Okay, so, yeah, this movie is just... Okay, so another point is when they're, like, being executed, kind of, mm-hmm. is, like, another, it's just another thought, like, just, like, what if they just died? And, like, Again. the movie ended. Yeah. yeah, so this whole movie was just you thinking about death. <laughs> right. Sure. You, you spent all no, of Bill and Ted. that's every movie. Maybe one of them's already dead. Oh, maybe Ted really died. Oh, what if they both get executed? Like, that's how you watch, like, a zany <laughs> romp from the 80s. Well, I'd been watching a lot of horror content. What if there was a school shooter during the presentation? <laughs> What if though? Like that's just not what this movie was intended to be. I don't think. Where? But I was like, where they were going? Trying to find it because I had been watching horror content, (laughs) and so I was like, but it would have been a really. I think it would have been a really good movie if they both just got executed in the movie, just ended. Roll credits. I don't know. It would have been a good movie. (laughs) Great. I would have loved that. It would have been Infinity War. Oh, Oh, I said it. No Infinity War spoilers on my good podcast. I said it. I said it. Go home. He's got a lot of... It's been like three weeks. Get over it. (laughs) Dad has a lot of really bad, invalid hot takes about Infinity War. I do not. I've got awesome takes. (laughs) They're not valid. Awesome hot takes about Infinity War. Save it for your Infinity War podcast. (laughs) I will make an Infinity War podcast. We totally should. Um, Where I just... It's just us yelling at each other about it. Okay. Um question about this is really weird is napoleon's the only person that gets credit for eating the ziggy piggy thing even though everyone clearly was eating it yeah i noticed that but you know he's napoleon <laughs> no right? one knows that he's napoleon and he did your look, first thought well, look at him <laughs> okay, he's wearing someone, the outfit you're telling me that if someone who was like dressed up as like a historical reenactor dude yeah, yeah. you saw him your yeah. first thought would be that is actual napoleon <laughs> I don't know. Like I, dude. I wrote a paper in one of my philosophy classes in college about like the person who thinks he's Napoleon. Like at some point, does he become Napoleon? I like if they really like, how much does your mind? Yeah, I'm sorry. On my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save it for my philosophy podcast. <laughs> philosophy, so uh, many podcasts. Yeah, all we are is dust in the wind, which is a, it's it's an old song. Like you didn't get that. Nope. And then his response was. Uh, Oh, I like was- sand through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. And like that's a days of our lives was a soap opera, yes, or I'm still is maybe. But and is that's it? and no, and a- that's the theme. Like at the beginning, mm-hmm. this guy comes up like sand through the hourglass, <laughs> so are the days oh, of really? our lives. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Great. That's where. The, so I knew that stuff was going over your head. But yeah, that's that great. was yeah, yeah. It was totally I just definitely there. thought that was just like a moment that they do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Really, really dumb characters is something like vaguely smart. No, that's no, what no. I thought no. That was. So they were they were just lifting stuff off of like old things, and that was why I thought it was weird when he he was like hey say some lyrics to the the, the princess babes and then he made something up but, right like Why? i thought he was going to use like a regular song lyric that someone else smart had written right me too rather than saying hey like, will you go to prom with me apparently they shot a prom scene like the <gasps> yes the, they did, they did. the end of the costumes. movie was them supposed supposedly they, they oh, took the princesses gonna, to prom i'm gonna show you those costumes and, and we didn't get to see that there's such a look all right so one of the places i'm at in my chronological order that's ahead of yours is I really loved in the the shtick at the end when they had to break everybody out of prison from the yes, evil dad really that you hate. That. Are we really close? Yeah. The uh, I loved the time loops. Like I thought that's that was cool. pretty clever that's to be so like, oh yeah, okay. Right now I could really I, re- I just, remember to get a trash can. Yeah. Oh, you need a tape recorder and you need to blah blah blah. Like I thought that was kind of clever. Right. Can I just say I'm so glad they didn't show all of that. Like it yeah, would have no, dragged no, on. No, yeah, it's it's like Squirrel Girl, right? It's just, oh yeah, well, I'm going to go get a tape recorder, yeah. and then boom, there it is. It happened because you did it in another. Right, I'm just like so glad loop. That they didn't have like that after happened that. after the movie ended. Right, even. like all that they yeah, did all that like stuff that. after the movie. ended. I really like that it happened after the movie ended because I would have got it would have been like if like they the, went back. The, and the cool part the of that is they could have done that at any point in their life. Oh, the weird. like they could have been 80 years old and, and looked like, hey, back remember? and did that. T- oh, yeah, I got to go do the tape recorder, right? Yeah, that's so cool. And then they're like, oh, what if I forget to do it? Oh, well, clearly I didn't because there it is. So I didn't forget to do it. I must have done yeah, it because cool. it really happened. That's cool. Like, that's wild. I like that. I was thinking, too, like on the when we're talking about time loops, I'm kind of giving to the very end here. But like when Rufus gives them the guitars. Yeah. I was thinking, like, what if, you know, like the, this entire society is based on these two dudes and their music. 
Like, what if those two guitars were like in a museum in the future? He broke out. He and broke so, well, out. He, but they're like, "Hey, go give them." You know, like the people that are sending him on the mission are like, "Hey, go give them these two guitars because these are their guitars, right?" Yeah. But then, like this crazy loop happens where, like, where did the guitars come from? Because uh, they like went into the museum because they had them, but then they took them out of the museum to I give them to them. About that. Like there was no original purchase. And so you have to have like the time travel theory where there's a first entry into the loop where they bought the guitars and then the loop starts where they're given the guitars and kind of like it's a whole crazy time. Like, time yeah. travel is yeah, just yeah. a thing. It's yeah, a thing yeah. to deal with. Yep. It's that's just a thing. Okay, what do you, what do you got? Get us so my, my thought right before this was just sort of like um they were in um they were, Okay, first of all, what bugged me is they said it was... They sort of implied that it was the Jurassic period where they were going. Mm-hmm. Or, like, dinosaurs were there. Yeah. There were no dinosaurs shown, which I was disappointed about. Yeah, I mean, it's not Jurassic Park, right? We, yeah, we weren't ready were for no that dinosaurs. for many, many years. Yeah, it would have looked like Land of the Lost, <laughs> oh. which doesn't mean anything to you, but that's not <laughs> um, what anybody needed to see at the time. There were no dinosaurs, and I really There would have been slea stacks. I loved oh, those slea stacks. I'm worried. Man, I um, loved those slea stacks. That was an awesome yeah. thing. Anyways, right. there were no dinosaurs, but there were cavemen, and cavemen and dinosaurs did not exist at the same time. Mm-hmm. But anyways, my question was, do you think people get typecast as cavemen? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. If you look like a caveman, you're probably going to play a lot of caveman parts. If you've got a nice cro magnon brow <laughs> that kind of does that little bit and you're a little extra hairy, then yeah, you're probably going to end up. I know a couple of guys that could probably, if they were <laughs> actors, they would be cavemen almost constantly. <laughs> That's amazing. Every role you're of theirs really would be cavemen. really good at grunting angrily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why cavemen are always so angry. You've got a prominent brow. Right. Yeah. Why are cavemen always so angry? There is just like gr- angry grunts. Well, so I think I it's probably a lot like mommy always tells me when I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> talking to people from Poland or from Russia. I know they sound angry, but I promise they're not. Right. Like it's just the language. Like caveman language sounds German. angry. They're not really mad. No, it but like, no, 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 because they murder each other a lot. And I think that would cause, that would be a little bit angry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, if you want the good pleasurable. Cave- if you want the good caveman content, uh, go I'm doing the gay thing. I didn't even realize yeah. Yeah. it is. Go watch uh, Firebringer by Star Kid. It's musical. It's really good. Mm. Um, or you can watch Caveman with Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> you want some go good, watch Firebringer. It's the good. origin of caca as like a pop culture word. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that was a pop culture word. It even. kind of is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of. All right. Um, oh, here it is. There's 70 uses of the word dude and 30 of excellent. That's, excellent. that's the one I couldn't think of. <laughs> So you've got to watch some Wayne's World now, too, because Wayne's oh, World is kind of based on these guys a little bit. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so first of all, so during the presentation, the presentation was really cool. I didn't really have a lot of notes on it. It was, like, cool. I it was. It. It was, like, it was I, really like, cool. They, like I said, they went into hyperdrive and did, like, three montages, like them in the mall, <laughs> in the water park. And then getting There was arrested. montages of going and picking up uh, extra extra credit people. Yeah. So, that like like I said, they spent so much time in the medieval time that they had to montage the second half of the movie, which I actually enjoyed better because it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was good. Um, and, uh, and then they do the presentation. And my question about the presentation is, how did they suddenly get smart? Like, there was no point in any of this that they learned anything about what was going on with all these people. And then suddenly they're like, oh, Joan of Arc made the Dauphin. The, 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 like, you know, it's like they... Well, they saw it, probably. Yeah, it's like they watched the oh, no, Mila Jojovic movie. Well, see, the Messenger, point- really good. Another another great movie. Mila, yeah, Mila plays uh, uh, Joan of Arc in a movie, and she's fantastic. Nice. Love it. I want you to watch that. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, how did they get suddenly they're so smart, and they can tell well, all these things about all these people, and... Uh, I'm Genghis gonna say, Khan, and, and they pronounce everybody's names correctly. Hi, and my. like, what happened when they suddenly were able to do those things? Uh, they were being fed those lines like from what, the future. What led us to believe that they learned this stuff? And so, what I choose matter. to it's believe, cool. what I put in my oh, notes, oh boy. what I choose to believe is it's the power of travel. <laughs> this is wow. going to different cultures and visiting different places and you different people. Know you these suddenly, things. yeah, you learn things. You get smarter. Yay. You become a better person. Yay. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Um. So. My thing about my thing about this is everyone like doesn't really question how they got these people here. Yeah. Like everyone's just like, cool, that's Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Nice. Oh no, 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 no. Nobody in the audience believes that's actually Abraham well, Lincoln. Well no, but like still, like a historical reenactor of Abraham Lincoln, how did these two high school, like dumb high school boys? Because well, they had to or they would someone. fail history. And you know, no one wants to fail history. <laughs> so if you need to drop a few grand on <laughs> character actors to play bit parts in your presentation, so be it. Right, like yeah. I know one and then at the end... Everybody's dancing in the thing and, like, <laughs> conducting with spoons. Right. Like, everybody has ice cream suddenly at one point in the presentation. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from. 
Like everybody got little self serve or single serve ice cream Why things not? with spoon. Like I don't know what, what happened there, but that was yeah. Why not? Because it's because that one guy needed a spoon to conduct with with beef oven. Beef, beef oven. Beef, beef oven. <laughs> beef oven. <laughs> Right. Um, so yeah, and then at the end, they all go into the time machine, and it like yeah, it does its cool explodey thing, and yeah. everyone's just like, "Cool, awesome special effects, dude!" <laughs> yeah, totally. It was, just, it was like a stage production they put together. You know, no. it was originally supposed to be a van. Yeah, like That's the, like the why Dharma it said van. The van. It was supposed to be like a Dharma van that they time traveled in, and they thought, "Oh, it's too much like the DeLorean in Back to the Future." So, so let's, let's make, make it, it a artist. phone box because nobody's ever done that before. <laughs> Let's be more original. I think a van would have been very Nobody watches British TV. We can make it a van (laughs) instead. Um... I, uh, when they, another thing, when Rufus brought the guitar strap, or brought the guitar strap, when he brought the guitars, (laughs) when he brought, gave them the guitars and he wanted to, he wanted to jam with them, he had like this guitar strap. I I am (laughs) intending to say guitar strap. Rufus had this guitar strap. Well, actually, it wasn't Rufus's, I guess. He took it from one of their guitars. Um, but it's like a rainbow, like, uh, Uh uh, like Chevron. I totally had that. Like everybody, yeah, everybody had that guitar strap. Like it was a very nice little detail, (laughs) specific guitar uh, strap, specific thing about the guitar strap that he was wearing when he did that. Nice. Okay. And then there's a credit in the credits of like the hand, Rufus's hands right. when he does the guitar solo. Yeah, I'm so glad yeah. I don't play guitar like like uh, in that way, like electric guitar like that. Yeah, we need to like, get you playing your guitar. Your fingers. You get calluses. They would hurt so much because the strings on guitars are different than the strings on ukuleles. Yeah, yeah. And they're like a metal almost. Yeah, this they is They hurt. True. That oh, there we seems go. bad. Um, so yeah, I think the ending was uh, pretty valid. I think it's pretty good. So did it, it like, in the in the Doctor Who uh, uh, element, did you learn anything? Did I learn anything? Yeah, I was I'm curious well, if this movie... first of all, I so, didn't know Billy the Kid was a person that existed. Yeah, so you did. So you learned that. some stuff about history. Yeah, yeah. So I Bill, don't know a lot about Joan of Arc, and I didn't really come out of this movie knowing a lot about Joan of Arc, but... The guy that plays Bill, who I think is also in uh, Lost Boys, which you should watch at some point, too. The podcast? Or somebody, Lost Boys? Somebody that looks a lot like him. Uh... He said he he would get two kinds of letters from teachers. He would get one kind of letter from history teachers that were like, you're awesome. My kids are interested in these people and they're learning all about them. Thank you so much. And then he would get a very different kind of letter from English teachers. <laughs> that would say, you're, you guys are ruining the language. You are ruining and the English language. And I'm sure it's just a bit that he had, but I thought it was a pretty funny quote to come out of that guy. That's so good. Uh, the, so here's, here's my other hot take on as we're wrapping oh, up take. here. Oh, so the, uh, the montage in the mall... Mm-hmm. Was uh, do you want to, was the music was do you want to play by a band called Extreme? Okay, yes. this guy named Noodle Betancourt was a guitar player and he was just That's amazing. A, right? a fun name, yeah. It's Nuno, like JJ Bittenbinder. Noodle Betancourt. So Nuno was awesome, like an amazing, amazing guitar player, right? Mm-hmm. And I was into hair bands and, and all this craziness back at the time, right? And so I was like, oh, I love these guys. Like I've never heard of them. Like I probably I, I sort of remember staying in the movie theater. And waiting for the credits to finish because the music always comes at the end of the credits. Yeah. And I wanted to see who who Wait, is, is this band. Wait, you're showing me. What do you mean? You're showing it to me during the Guns N' Roses. Well, before the Guns N' Roses podcast. You may, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta figure out who this band is. And so I found out that it was Extreme. They had an album that had just come out or was about to come out or something. So I bought the album and was listening to the album, and it's it's very guitar-y. It yeah, sounds guitars. a lot like the "Do You Want to Play" thing, right? And uh, so. We were living in Dallas at the time. Mm-hmm. And I found out they were coming to town. Oh, really? Yeah, they were playing at this place I used oh, to go so see rad. live live bands um, just outside of Dallas. And I used to love this place. And so I was like, awesome, I'm going to go check out. I'm going to go see Extreme Live, and I'm super excited about it. This is, this is the guys I ran into in the mall. Remember I told you like in a Hot Topic or something? Oh, yeah. And I ran into these dudes. Yeah. Right? So, I, so I went to buy clothes to wear to this concert, and I was in the same. It wasn't Hot Topic, but it was <laughs> it was like the equivalent of like a, a clothing store Hot Topic, like only clothing, and it was like only black and white clothing or something. I don't know what the hell it was, <laughs> but it was a really store. weird. Yeah, it was a really weird hip store. But I ran into these guys in the mall in the Galleria in Dallas or something, and so I was like, "Oh, well, holy shit, I'm coming to your show tonight!" And they're like, "Hey, cool, come check us out, come out and hang out on the bus after the thing." And I was like, "All right, sweet, I'll come hang out on the bus." <laughs> and so. Uh, I go to the show, and opening for them is a band called Alice in Chains that, like, oh nobody had ever heard of. Like, nobody really? knew. Like, I didn't know who they were. I didn't know anything about them. And so, they Alice in the Chains, they were the opening band for Extreme. That's so wild. And so, Alice in Chains starts playing, and I'm like, oh my God, my entire life has been a lie. Like, I had no idea music this cool existed. Like, these oh, guys are sad. amazing. Oh, no. And I've been listening to this bubblegum hairband garbage this whole time. And so, they were just 
amazing. And so uh, I went back and I was going to go get on the bus with uh, Extreme because even though I my world has been shattered, I wasn't going to pass up a chance to hang out on a tour bus. Right. Um, and I went on the wrong bus, and I got on Allison Chain's bus. Oh my god! And so I like I kind of hung out and talked to and partied with those guys for a little while, and just like it was amazing. And you so with Allison Chain? Yeah, 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 totally partied with Allison Chain. Why did you tell in, me these in, things in, in, in Dallas? Nobody and really so, knows their like, fathers. A week or a month later, their album came out, and like this was I went to a record store. Wow. Yeah, and. uh they, they, it was still in the box in the back. They weren't even going to put it out on the shelf because they didn't know what it was. And they like went and cut the box open and gave me one of the CDs so oh, that I could buy so one of the cool. CDs. And then that started my path down like the whole grunge journey of, uh, yeah. Emo but phase. like it was so amazing to like that. This movie led me to Extreme, which led me to this one little show. And then Alice in Chains opened you for Extreme. With them. You didn't and tell me And I was like, this. oh my God, like I can't believe that I've been listening to this garbage all my life. And now, now it's all math rock, right? Now it's just slant. Uh, on on like an infinite loop on my playlist. Yeah, yeah, that's his playlist. Yeah. Um, I have a more. Well, I guess I'm just like one band on repeat too. Yeah, you are. It's it alternates very wildly between only listening to Imagine Dragons and mm. only listening Glass Animals, mm. and that's it. I watched. I read a really snarky article the other day about somebody like forty bands that are ruining the world, and uh, Imagine Dragons was on the list of like. Well, they're making it better. Bands that we're going to be embarrassed we listened to in 10 years, I think was the commentary on Imagine oh, well, Dragons. Uh, screw it, because I like their music now. <laughs> they're so going to be your extreme in 10 years. You're going to be like, oh my God, my no, life's a lie. I will stand Dan Reynolds until I die, and you cannot convince me otherwise. <laughs> all right, all right. We're, 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 we're over an hour here, so we, oh, we need heck. to start moving towards okay. wrapping this thing up. Do we up. have hot take what questions? Are, what are your final thoughts? Do we have hot take questions? We don't have hot take questions. Okay, well, my, uh, my final thought, which is bolded and very large, is the real adventure was the homosexuality we found along the way. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> oh, subtle okay. racism. <laughs> subtle racism. I didn't tell you. Okay, so I, see, I saw this video much before this movie came out, mm-hmm. and I want to ask if you've ever seen it. It's called... Um, Oh, I have it. It's called, I think, Bill and Ted's Excellent Homosexual Adventure. I clearly have not seen said video. <laughs> oh, my God. It's fantastic. Okay. It's a song. It's, yeah, Bill and Ted's Homosexual Adventure. And that's what Two California Valley Boys, The Very Best of Friends, is oh, from. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you finally closed the loop on that one. <laughs> I closed it. It took like an hour to close the loop. <laughs> I, got dista- I got distracted. Okay, I'll check it I've out. seen this video much, long- much before this movie, and I was like, this is a movie Bill and Ted's Homosexual uh, Adventure is from. Right, so, or they made a whole movie with them not gay? <laughs> about the Bill uh, and Ted's Homosexual Adventure Like song? you and Bubba Gump. They made a movie about that restaurant? What the I hell's going on there? I think they made a movie about the what, restaurant, uh, Okay, so before we get out of here, uh, you got to give me an assignment. All right. Um, oh, so valid, not valid. Valid. It's valid. Valid? All yeah, right. it's valid. All right. I like the little fandom. One gay slur. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> they got one, but they made up for it in Bros TM. Nice. Okay, what's so, my uh, what's my assignment? Your assignment is to... I can't believe I haven't done this already, but your assignment is to listen to the musical Lizard Boy, which mm. I've been fangirling about... Oh, I apologize for using the term fangirling there. Um, I've been being excited about hmm. for like... A very standing. long time. I've been standing it. Um, my very, very good friend showed it to me. Mm-hmm. You know who you are if you're listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was blown away. It's gay. It's beautiful. Lizard boy? Lizard boy. How old is this? Very recent. Like 2016. Yeah, it's new. Okay. It's. I think it might have been 2017, 2016 when it came out. Yeah. It was really it, good. It's newer than Be More Chill. Yes. It yeah. ran off Broadway for a little bit. It's over now and I'm yeah. sad about it. Right. But there's a cast recording soundtrack? Yes. And fun fact, there's only three people. Oh, interesting. Three people. All right. And they all play like 80 different instruments. And that's what, um, I reference this constantly. Yep. A lot of my vocabulary is from it now. Oh, interesting. Sometimes okay. I'll just like straight up say, I'm just a boy who looks like a lizard. That's from mm. Lizard Boy. Okay. And I'm going to cover a song. That's the song with the kazoo I was mm. talking about. Is it a boy that looks like a lizard or a lizard that looks like a boy? <laughs> He's a boy who looks no, like no, a lizard. No, no. Okay. There's a whole backstory. And the backstory song is called Recess. Save it for your Lizard Boy podcast. And I'm going to cover it. And I was talking to you about it. <laughs> Save it for Because it has your a kazoo. Lizard boy podcast. All right. All right. Yeah. We will bring a kazoo. Because a kazoo oh. will be your horn of this podcast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Horn, it's a kazoo. <laughs> a 21 kazoo salute. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Lizard Boy. Uh, check Lizard it out. Boy. We'll put a link. If you're watching it on the YouTube channel, we'll put a link down there where you can find the soundtrack and listen to it. And I'm going to listen to it. And then we'll uh, hear you guys back here in two weeks, yes. right? 
uh, also, uh, I will give you a link, and there'll be a link in the description on that podcast to yeah. the plot. Yeah. Because only the soundtrack is available oh, yeah. and not the plot. Okay, good. Because that made a, it helped me a ton with Be More Chill. Yes. Yeah, totally There's agree. There's a lot of... Re- it's very confusing without the plot, but I will give you the plot, All right. and it'll be good. Yeah, we'll share nice. it with you guys. Twitter. And, in, and uh, yeah, hey. Oh, hey, by the way. Twitter. House, we have a Twitter Housekeeping. Wow. Yeah. If you want to reach out to us, uh, send us an email at validate me podcast at gmail.com, or you can send us a tweet at validate me cast. Which is now an active Twitter account that I am running. And I'm yeah, Presley's going to be tweeting and doing a bunch of stuff. She's taking over some of the social media duties for the at validate me cast Twitter handle. So, so like people. just sending out and retweeting people that talk about the stuff that we've done podcasts on, basically, and, and, yes. and hitting up the people. I'm sure the people from Lizard Boy would love to hear that we're oh, doing a thing about them. We'll try so. and hear them. I yeah. Love them. So uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. And until then, bear with us.